whether they need tractors or not is another story. That's certainly true with weapons. Yes. <laughs> so we got to be careful that it's not just the local constituency that's providing the services, but it really develop, furthers our, our goal of what we're trying to accomplish in, in the host country. Your point is right on target, and I really do think President Obama has done a fabulous job redirecting USAID to say accountability must be part of the mission. I think we have another question over here. Yes. Yes. Uh, thank you, Senator. How do we deal with the situation of uh, strong man <coughs> stability, as we see in Uganda, Burundi, Rwanda, and both Congos and other regions, vis-a-vis -vis genuine democratization? It, it is the it is the single greatest problem, particularly in the central parts of Africa. It is by far the most challenging problem. Look, power corrupts. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the proper balances in place, it causes abuses. And we've seen that. Uh, the, it's very clear in the countries that you just mentioned, and other countries, by the way. So that's why I say democracy funding, is where good governance, is where the United States has been missing in action. The amount of funds we put into good governance is very, very small. I have a bill in that will require us to do an evaluation of every country in the world, every single country in the world, including the United States, on their commitment to fight corruption. Can we give you a hand clap? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what happens here is, I mean, this is corruption. Uh -huh. Powers, there's, the, the worst, one of the worst countries in the world today is Russia. Putin is one of the wealthiest people in the world today. And he didn't make it on his salary as president of Russia. It's the oligarchs that are paying him off for the type of government that, that the Russians are getting today. And there are, if you disagree with it in Russia, you end up in jail. If you write about it as a reporter, you end up in jail. If you get too close to, to, to setting up an, an alternative power structure, you end up in jail. So if you don't pay him off, and that's what happened with a guy named Bill Browder, your, your life is threatened. And fortunately, he got out of town before he was killed. So in Africa, we have countries that are following that path. And that's not unusual in countries that are in transition. That's the ch greatest challenge, is to take a country that's been under uh, uh, strong arm rule and you start moving towards democracy. How do you do it in a way that doesn't fuel corruption? And that's, that's why you need U.S. as your partner. And the question that was asked before, we give you A, B, C, D, and E to, so that you can take the wealth of your country and turn it into increased standard of living for your people. But the accountability, the accountability, is free and fair elections, open ability to criticize your government without being thrown into jail, religious freedom, representing all the people, because you have different ethnic communities and different, different traditions. All the people have to be, have fair opportunity. These are not US values. These are universal values. And that's what we have to do, and we, we haven't in the past. And as you know, including in Africa, we've made partnerships with leaders that were corrupt and were, were human rights violators. And that's, that, it, that's never good, and we, shouldn't, we, 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 we can't do that in the future. Last question, Brother Leo. Thank you, thank you. It's good to be hearing you uh, talk about the things that our government is doing. My question is this, and I'm concerned with the infrastructure of Africa, and I've studied early African history since I was in BDC, and one of the questions I have is, how do we put together an organization and put in place the funding, because we're going to need funds to be able to develop some of the things that we want to do for agriculture and the packaging and disbursement of the, the goods, so that everybody can have access to it and, and, and buy food. Uh, these things take a, a large infrastructure. There are many plans that we can put together as far as an organization and structure and put a model together. We have to model this for the rest of them so that they can see what we're doing and follow it. And they will be 
definitely please to try and be like us. Great question. And it really comes back to, I think, the point that Reverend Weaver made in, in the beginning, and that is uh, the partnerships that we're talking about. If you have a government that has the confidence, not only of its people, but of the international community, if you have the climate in the country for progress and growth, money will come in. Will come in in big time. Reason? Because in most of the parts of Africa, it's underdeveloped, which means there's tremendous potential for growth and profits. And the profit motive is still the number one driving force for investment today. And you'll get that. There's also strategic partnership issues. That's why the United States needs to be much more aggressive. We need global partners. And those that are in the ground level as a country is building will get the benefits of having strategic partners as we deal with our global needs. There's also markets for your products. And those who get in, again, at an early stage, you'll see more of our products. And the products are not just hard goods, they're also services that become very valuable to the growth of our uh, the American economy. So it's predictability. When you ask an investor, you ask General Motors when you'll go to a country, or you ask um, um, G General Electric when they want to go in and do things, they'll tell you, that it, is, is the country stable? Will our workforce be safe? Uh, do they have uh, the, uh, the type of leaders that are really interested in developing the country's resources for its people? After all, it's illegal for an American to participate, an American business person or an individual to, to participate in bribery. Are we going to be safe so we don't have to give bribes in order to get our licenses, in order to do business? Those are how you develop the infrastructure. Not every country adheres to those same standards. So if you're Chinese, you can, you can give bribes. And the reason why their government allows you to give bribes is because they take bribes. And that's, uh, look, China's gone through a tremendous change for the better over the last 20 years. They still have a long way to go before they're an honest government. And they're robbing their people of their full potential. And I think they'll change. I think China will continue to change. So, I, so my point is, I think, pretty clear. You, you do that, and American investors and companies will go, and... NGOs will have more confidence of sending their people. You know, in order to build infrastructure, you've got to have technical support. You've got to have the people there that help, that have the international expertise. We, we saw that in healthcare. If you're going to build a healthcare infrastructure, you're going to have to have people who go to these countries to help them train and help them establish it. You're not going to go there if you don't think you're safe. You're going to have to pull your workers. So that's the climate. You get the climate going, you'll get the airports, you'll get the electrical systems, you'll get the water systems. You know, one of the major problems is water. Yeah. <laughs> Don't talk about I mean, it. You know, you're, you're, you, there is a real danger mm -hmm. in some of these countries whether you're going to have any safe water supplies. Mm -hmm. So you've got to deal with those. That's the basic infrastructure that has to be dealt with. And I really do believe America must be the leader. There's only one America. There's only one USA. There's only one country that has capacity to do what we can do. And you've seen so many of our presidential candidates say, all they want to do is pull, pull the trigger on a weapon, and that's America's strength. That's not America's strength. That's not, America doesn't, in fact, it's counterproductive. When we send troops in, we look like we're an imperialist country. We look like it's a crusade. But when we're there, I mean, Peace Corps, what an incredible program that is. When we're there giving our values and ideals, which are global values and ideas, we help build the type of climate for these countries will grow and their people will benefit and everyone will benefit, the globe will benefit, all of us will benefit from it. So I'm convinced that it will come, but I want to know, I, I want, and this gets me back to where I started, Reverend Weaver, I want you to make sure everyone votes in this election because I've never seen a more consequential difference <laughs> between the people running for president. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm very biased. I admit my bias. I look at the Republicans, and I can't believe what I see out there. That's right. So, uh, I know you're nonpartisan here. I understand that. But as a United States Senator, I don't have to be nonpartisan. We've got to um, use the ballot box to get leaders like President Obama. You know, I, I'm going to give a speech in Baltimore. I, I know I'm way over time. I'll, 
I'll tell the Muslim group that you helped me here. But I want to give a, I'm giving a speech in Baltimore next month on the on the Obama legacy on foreign policy. Okay. The president has not gotten the credit he deserves. Amen. Amen. This president has led with diplomacy. Yes. He's led with coalition building. He's led with ideals. That's where he's led. And he's carried that out with a big stick, our U.S. military, letting us know that you go so far, we'll use our military. And he used our military. He's using it now in Syria. He used it in Libya. He's used our military. But he doesn't shoot first and then say, what do we have? Because that's what happened in Iraq. We never should have used our military in Iraq. And we're paying a very, I mean, I really do believe that a lot of the problems that we see globally today is a result of the previous president's policies. So uh, it makes a difference who the commander in chief is. So uh, anyway, I am optimistic, Reverend, that we're gonna, we're gonna uh, get the right policies in Africa. It is that we have incredible uh, leaders in this country that are doing things from our from, from the faith-based leaders to those in, in the USAID with, uh, with uh, Gail Smith. I think we had the right people in place, and I think we're going to continue to grow with strength, and that strength is going to help the people of Africa and help the people of America. So God bless, and thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I know he's got the dash, but I'm wondering, uh, Senator, if we can just take a quick photograph and with the banner here. So let's gather around very, very quickly, and you'll just have to tell our Muslim brothers that we took a